This is North Pod, a North Melbourne fan podcast, hosted by Jason Hunt. Hello and welcome back to North Pod. Um, your host Jason again with you here for another North Pod. And yeah, thanks so much for for clicking in and and having another listen. Um, we're going to have a bit of a different episode today. Actually, we're not reviewing a game. There hasn't been a game since I last recorded. But I thought it would be interesting just to maybe take stock for the season, um, look at some positives and some negatives from the season so far. Um, and where to next for the for the rest of the season? We're about a quarter of the way um, through the matches, so I thought this might be a good time to do a bit of that, um, and also just to have a look at some expectations for the rest of the season. So, what what players um, do we want to get a look at throughout the rest of the year? Maybe how many wins are we expecting North Melbourne could realistically end up with? and um, potentially what the team should look like at the end of the year is something that I'm kind of interested in talking a little bit about. So before we jump into that, I just want to um, give a really big thanks to everyone who's listened to the first couple of episodes um, and those who've got in touch to give positive feedback. Hopefully you'll all stick around. Hopefully you're all listening to this because you liked the first couple of episodes. Please continue to share me with any North Melbourne fans um, that you know. Get the Help me get the word out there about this podcast. Um, I'm certainly in it for the long haul, so I'm hoping to, you know, get some more support as, as the weeks go on. And just a, sp- a bit of a favour, I guess, that I ha- have to ask you all, if you could please subscribe on the podcast service that you use. And if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, please give me a review, give me the five-star review if you can. Um, just helps me to surface the podcast to more people. And finally, if you're looking to get involved on social media, I am at North Pod Show at Twitter. I'm going to be tweeting a fair bit in the future, hopefully, so give that a follow. I've also got a Facebook page, at North Pod an Instagram, a YouTube. I'm not sure if I'll use the YouTube. I've been posting the podcast on YouTube, but there's not a lot of traction on that platform. So I'll only continue to do that if people want that. And I've also, I guess, I've, I'm I'm, a bit, I'm active in the North Melbourne subreddit on Reddit. So that's another place that you might like to interact with me, I guess. If you go to my Buzzsprout website, which is northpod.buzzsprout.com, you can see all of my social links there and you can also see um, all of the podcast services that I'm available on so you can subscribe to NorthPod on the podcast service that you prefer. All right, let's jump in. So I thought I'll mix things up a little bit. We are going to have a look at the positives and negatives from the season so far, but I thought we'd just alternate and we'd do a negative, then we'll do a positive and so on just to keep it keep things moving and keep it a bit more upbeat, I guess. So we'll start with our first negative because I always like to start with the negative so we can end on the positives. Um, I don't know if what you guys are like, but I also like when I go to the footy, I'll sit behind the goals typically and I always want um, North Melbourne to be kicking towards me in the last quarter. Um, so maybe, I don't know, there's something in that. I really I, I like saving the best things to last, I suppose. Um, anyway, for our first negative, it's got to be Taron Thomas, I think. He's just created a lot of drama. He's been, I guess, the the one thing that's been consistently bad news for North Melbourne recently um, with all of his off-field issues. Um, I'm sure if you're catching up on North Melbourne news, you would have seen that he's been welcomed back to the VFL team to train uh, for this week. So hopefully that's a good thing for him. Hopefully it's a start of something positive. Um, personally, I'm not super optimistic about that, but I'm hoping, as I said, I hope it's a good thing for him. And I, I do think there's an element of him being in a structured environment will be positive for him. Uh, but certainly from a North Melbourne perspective, he hasn't been a positive at all this this year. For our first positive, it's pretty easy. It has to be Harry Sheasel. He has been an absolute revelation for North Melbourne, really taken the heat out of the pain from having Jason Horn Francis leave, or I guess the issues that have come 
as a result of um, Jason Horn Francis wanting to leave. Um, Sheasel's been phenomenal. He's sitting sixth in the competition for disposals from his first ever five matches, which is just remarkable. Um, it's been a while since we've had a ball magnet like Sheasel, he's averaging 31.6 disposals. I mean, he's also been quite effective. His um, efficiency is 76%, which is above the league average. He's averaging 6.2 marks, 3.4 tackles a match. I mean, just across the board, he's been really impressive. Sure, there's been a couple of kick-ins um, where he's kind of, you know, padding his stats, I guess, a little bit. And I shouldn't say he's padding his stats, like, but his stats are being padded by that. And certainly in that last match against Brisbane, he, he butched a couple of those kick-ins. But where when you're picking there, he's been phenomenal. He's been a real cool head down back for a really young player. Um, and I think the exciting thing about him is that he could really play anywhere in the future. Like I, I think it'd be great to see him play mostly back back line for this year, just so we can get a feel for the game. And I mean, he's playing really well back there. But he could absolutely be a midfielder for us. He could absolutely be a half forward. There's so many different ways that we could potentially use him in the future. So, I mean, it's just it's just per chance that he's playing back that uh, he and Clarko ended up sort of experimenting with playing him there in one of those practice matches and he hasn't really gone back since. So definitely a massive positive for us. She's bringing the good vibes for us earlier in the year. Uh, our second negative, and I think this has potential to be a positive in the future, but our aggressive zone defense has looked horrific. Um, when we've turned it over or we've had that first line of defense broken, I think earlier in the year in those first couple of matches didn't look so bad. Um, I, I think p- part of that is because the defense was holding um, and we were turning it over less. But when we've turned it over in dangerous positions or... Um, the opposition's managed to take maybe a contested mark or just or get past that first part of the zone. It, it's looked real bad. It's been real shades of 2021 or 2022 North Melbourne at times. And sure, not having Mackay for those first four matches and Logue missing a game hasn't helped. They're obviously two really big pillars for our, our defence moving forward. But yeah, I think particularly coming off the back of the Brisbane game where we we had, I guess, our best six defenders in. And we, you know, got absolutely touched up by 70 plus points. Uh, And even in that Carlton game, there was real worrying signs with the way that they were able to just move through our defense and take the ball up the whole ground. So I I think it could be a positive because, you know, long term, if we get enough good players playing the right way and playing into the structures correctly, I think it has potential to be a really good defensive strategy. But, yeah, we're just not there yet. Sort of, at, We're at the point where everything has to go right and we're turning it over too often. So it hasn't looked good so far this year, but um, hopefully with a bit of consistency moving forward, we can, we can improve there. Um, the next positive, I mean, it was great to have two early wins. Beating Fremantle and West Coast um, was fantastic to be 2-2, two and two, I thought. I mean, every North Melbourne fan, I think, around was feeling really good about the fact that we were... We'd won the first two, sure. We are a bit lucky, I think, to beat um, beat Fremantle. That really could have gone either way. Um, and similarly, like it was, a, it was a tight game against West Coast, but you take those two wins. And when we compare this to last year, I mean, yep, we beat West Coast in round two, but that was practically a waffle side that we beat and we, we didn't play well. And we had to wait until uh, round 18 to get our second win and our only other win for the year against Richmond. And... Besides those two matches, round 17, when we led the whole game against Collingwood and then just got beaten at the end, that was really the only other game where I thought we looked like we were a chance throughout the match last year. So we were a chance against Carlton. We were a chance against Hawthorne. We weren't really ever a chance against Brisbane, but we've we've looked more likely this year, I guess. So um, getting those, those two wins, I think, makes us feel better about the year. And even if we don't win heaps more matches I think starting off the season on that positive note is really helpful for the supporters we can kind of see potential and we we feel a bit more optimistic earlier in the year I'm sure if we if we go on to lose the next how many what have we got left there's 18 matches that would be pretty disheartening but I I think yeah it's a it's a great basis to start on I think uh next negative the lack of a small forward who can pressure and kick goals and get involved on offense. It's a real sore spot. Um, and I know certainly on North Melbourne Twitter, there's a real hankering to get 
Kane Turner out of the side. He's been playing that role, or he's been trying to play that role, but pretty unsuccessfully in terms of consistently. So aside from a handful of marks that he's taken, I think he's kicked maybe two goals. He had a great tap against Fremantle. Um, He tapped it to Simpkin, who kicked it on to Stevenson, who kicked a goal. That's really all he's been able to do offensively. Um, Defensively, I thought he's been pretty good. Uh, I I didn't see much of an impact that he had against Brisbane, but in the other matches, at least, he has tackled his pressured. Um, He's been okay defensively. So we we just lack that small forward who can do both of those things. And I think that's been my issue with people saying kick Turner out because, look, Marnie and Spicer and Ford, sure, they haven't got a look in this year, but they are the alternatives in terms of small forwards. We saw we saw plenty of Marnie the last couple of years, and I'm not sure that he is the solution. Ford, I'm not sure, is a massive pressure forward, but certainly is a smaller forward. Um, and Spicer, I just I don't know if he's ready. So it's all well and good to say let's get let's get Kane Turner out, but we've got to have we've got to have something to replace him with. I don't really think Stevenson are, and Paul Curtis are elite defensively. I mean, Curtis is often playing more as a sort of medium marking forward. So we've really that's that's an area that <clears throat> we're lacking at the moment. And just to I guess summarize that, we are second last in the competition for tackles inside fifty averaging about eight a game. Top team, which is Melbourne, average 14.4. So that that is definitely an area that we need to improve on. We need to improve our defensive pressure, um, and we certainly need to, uh, I guess, find players or train up players to do that. Just to add on to that, we're also second last for marks inside 50. We're averaging nine a game. Um, the top team, Geelong's averaging 17.8. So we're second last for those two things. So tackles inside 50 and marking it inside 50. So we're not marking it. And then when it's coming to ground, we're not putting enough pressure on to keep it in. And I think that's something that we have been guilty of in years past as well. I think we were last for both of those last year. So we're we're one better at the moment. We're 17th for both, but that's a big issue. If um, Larky and Common aren't marking it, which they're not consistently at the moment, we, we need to be tackling and we, we don't have the, the players to do that or we're not doing it currently. So um, that's certainly something t- to try and improve moving into the next phase of the season. Uh, another positive, I've really felt that the young sort of young and middle-aged midfielders are, are kind of showing their class and, and rising to the occasion. So Davies, Uniac and Simkin have been fantastic. They're 23 and 25 respectively, and they are, they are leading the midfield this year, which is tremendous. I, th- I think LDU in particular started really strong. Simkin was really good early against Brisbane and has been consistent. Um, so... Those two have been fantastic, and then the likes of Powell and Phillips, who are sort of 20 and 21, they've both taken steps in the right direction, trying to build that consistency, but they've been better than they were in years past, so that's what we're looking for. I also thought Bailey Scott's continued to be great on on a wing. He's 22. So it's just those young, we want them, they're the right side of 25, all of those players, which is fantastic. Cunnington hasn't been fantastic, but I think in a way that's kind of showed us what we've got. Uh, he's certainly on the wrong side of 30. He's older and, I mean, we all love Cunners, but I don't know how much longer he's going to be, you know, a first-choice midfielder for us. So it's been great to see a kind of a changing of the guard um, with, with Cunners stepping stepping down a little bit and those other younger players coming up and, and stepping up. The last negative for the year, I mean, just the Brisbane game. Um, it's just deflating to lose by so much after an even first quarter. And I thought the thing that was, when I've reflected on it, the thing that was most disappointing about that game was it was all kind of senior or experienced players who didn't have a good game. So I thought Larky, McDonald, Zerha, Mackay, Turner and Kaur, um were all either bad or terrible. And they're all kind of players in the leadership group or more senior players, certainly players with, with more than 50 games of experience that should be leading from the front. McDonald's co-captain. We, we need more from players like that. So, yeah, it was just a terrible game. Hopefully we don't have many more like that. There We had plenty like that last year and we're hoping for fewer. So that was that was a real negative. And the final positive, and this 
look, take this one with a grain of salt, okay? I, we're coming from a low base, so we have to take positives where they are. And I'm, this one's quite a bit nerdy too, so strap in. But statistically, we're kind of sitting in the middle of the table for some of those statistics that, you know, indicate good football. Middle to bottom for some of them. So we are currently fourth in the competition for disposal um, efficiency. That seems like it's going to have to come down a little bit. I, ca- I can't see us staying um, that high for the, for the rest of the year. We're clangers, we're 12th best, turnovers, we're 12th best. So that's where I'm going, all right, look, 12th is not great, but it's not 17th, 18th where we've been over the past couple of years. And our midfield continued to be um, sort of solid. We're seventh best clearance side in the competition. So all of that is to say that we're beca- we're getting closer to being an okay football team. And I think whilst that's a bit of a sad thing to celebrate, like that's where we're at with with a rebuild like we've been going through. We've spent the last two years being really bad, and I think some of those statistics are sort of trending in the right direction. There's definitely still things to improve on, but I'm I'm seeing some things that make me have a bit of belief that we're we're on the right track, which is what we want to see. Okay, for this next segment, I thought we could take a little bit of a look ahead to um, what we might expect for the rest of the season. As I said earlier, we've got 18 matches to go, so plenty of time to blood some new players and get some experience, try try some different things. So I just thought we'd start by having a look at sort of who are the players that we haven't seen yet this year and what are we kind of wanting to see from them. So Wardlaw, George Wardlaw is a really easy one. Um, He's been building through the VFL um, and I think barring an injury, he's going to debut towards the middle part of the year um, and hopefully, you know, take some of those midfield minutes away from the likes of Cunnington and Greenwood. I've got a real low bar for Wardlaw. I just think we need to get him in and get him some game time. I don't really mind what it looks like at this point. I think, you know, he's played some pretty good VFL footy, but VFL is the VFL for a reason. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can he can do when he does eventually get a, get a go in, in the team. The second thing is just Jerry and um, Cal Coleman-Jones. I guess, you know, we need them to be at some point taking the mantle over from Goldie. Um, at the start of the year, we saw Cherry sort of got a chance, and then unfortunately he did his ankle. So I guess my question is around whether or not those two in the future can play together. Are they, are they able? Is one of them able to rest forward with Combat and Larky there? Like, does that make it? If we play two rucks and those two tall forwards, are we too tall? Like, these are things I think we need to work out, or at least work towards working out now. I, I do wonder if Clarko is going to be brave enough to to sit Goldie on the bench again. That's going to be interesting to watch. I, mean, I know he's about to play his, his 300th and he's been an amazing ruckman for us over the years. Yeah, I, th- I just think it's going to be a... I think we need to see Cherry and Cal Coleman-Jones throughout the rest of the year, whether that's the two of them playing or one of them playing with Goldie. Um, that's something that, that we need to see, I think. Building on that, something that we touched on earlier, Ford, Spicer and Marnie, I think either need to get it some kind of look this year or maybe it's time that we we move on from them Uh, i think spicer in particular deserves another look i know he's been having some time on the wing in the vfl and if that's the role for him then great i do think we're we're short a young wingman at the moment but yeah i just think we need to see what those three players look like in a alistair clarkson game plan yeah, I, I really want to see Spicer. I, I still hold out hope. I think Ford could be a player. I do. I, I think I worry that Marnie might not not be it. Um, but yeah, I think we need to see more of them throughout the rest of the year so that we can make an informed decision. And if that means we're downgrading Turner slightly, like that, it is what it is. I think we we need to see that. And the last two, Archer and Lazaro. I guess this is more of a can they push out the players that are holding them back. So I think for Archer, it's can he push out a core? Because it feels to me like between Goda and Bergman and Archer, they're all playing for one, maybe two spots in the side. All similar players kind of off half back, tall enough to play on the mediums. And I, yeah, I just, I think we need to see some more of Archer this year to get a sense for if he's up to it. I, I'm certainly not saying that if he doesn't play this year, he's off the list or anything like that, but I think we need to see, give him a look. Um, and I'm with Lazaro, it's can he push out a shield in the wing, really? We've seen a bit of Lazaro. We haven't seen him this year, so I think he, he deserves his chance 
at some stage this year. I think she, I'd be surprised if Shields plays 23 games for us. So I guess that's kind of what we're looking for there. Obviously, there are other players, but I think they're the... How many are I listen? They're the ace that... There are other players there, but I guess they're the ace that I would, I'm would i interested in seeing the most. Um, I feel pretty confident that all of them, maybe not all of Ford, Spicer and Marnie, but I think the rest of them will get a game at some point this year. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I'm just... That's, that's what we're looking for from them moving forward. In terms of expectations for the rest of the year and how many wins can we expect, um, I've kind of found five games in the fixtures that I, I feel like were a chance. So we've got this week against the Gold Coast and we play them again later in the year. There's two. We haven't played GWS yet. There's another. And we play Hawthorne on West Coast again. You would think we should be in with a chance against them. So there's five games where we should be a chance. You often also steal a game or two against good opposition. So like last year, for example... We beat Richmond. Richmond were a finals team last year. They were a decent side, and we we pinched a game against them. So if you say we split those games that were a chance in and we win two or three of those and we maybe beat one other good opposition, there's three or four wins in addition to what we've got. So you're looking at um, five or five or six wins for the year. I think that's pretty. That's a realistic expectation that we would come away with five or six wins. I think seven or eight would be... A success based on what we've seen this year. We won two last year. Let's be realistic. We won two. It was a really bad year. To jump from two to eight would be amazing. I don't. I don't think that would is going to happen. I think I'm predicting that we're going to come away with six wins. Um, that feels like realistic expectations. And six is fine. Obviously, there's the extra game this year because of Gather Room. We've got 23 opportunities to win a game. Um, so yeah, I'm predicting six. We can revisit this later in the year and see what we end up with. I think seven or eight would be a fantastic result for this young group. Um, and hopefully we can start that this, this week against the Gold Coast. All right. And for my final little segment today, I thought it'd be good just to have a look at what our quote unquote best team looks like at the moment. Um, and I'm going to compare that to what I think our best team looks like sort of towards the end of the year or into the future. So I'm going to look at two different teams. Hopefully it's not too confusing. I know it doesn't translate perfectly to an audio format, but we'll, we'll give it a go. So the first team that I'm going to, to talk through is what I think is a team that suits us in terms of getting quite a few young players on the pitch not too many that we um, are spreading ourselves too thin and are too inexperienced. Um, and for the purposes of this, I'm just assuming, I'm pretending that there's no injuries and I'm pretending, or I guess I'm accepting that Taron Thomas isn't available for selection at the moment. So I'll just go through the list and then I guess talk about some notes. So I've got across the full back line, Sheasel, Mackay, Gota. Across half back, I've got Zebul, Logue, McDonald. Across the middle of the ground, I've got Scott, Phillips, and then I've said one of Shields or Hall. So at the moment, Shields has been has been doing that. I think if we want to give Hall a go, I think this is the best spot to slot him in. But I wouldn't want to play Shields and Hall at the same time. I think too much experience, so to speak. So one of them uh, across the half forward line, I've got. Taylor, Combin, and Paul Curtis. Across the full forward line, I've got Cam Zerha, Larky, Stevenson. And then in the ruck, I've got Goldstein, LDU, Simkin. Then the four on the bench are Tom Powell, Cal Coleman-Jones, Darcy Tucker, and then one of Cunnington or Greenwood. I've really, I've liked having Cunnington... Um, or I've liked having Greenwood as the sub and then kind of not having them both in the game at the one time because I do think it's good to get that youth in there. So one or... And I, to me, I guess, you know, as a North Melbourne fan, I'd love to see that be Cunnington most of the time. And then as that 23rd player, the sub, I've got George Wardlaw. To be honest, he could be swapped with a Powell or a Tucker or a Goder or a, or a Cunnington or a Greenwood and I'd be okay with that. I just, you know, I've got to name someone as the sub, so... I think to me that that starting 23 is kind of what I personally think is our best look. 
So some notes. Um, I feel like Goda or Bergman are kind of interchangeable there, but I've, in my mind, I've subbed them in for core. I think I'm ready to have a look at what our team looks like without core. I think with Mackay and Logue both there, I'd like to see a Goda or a Bergman replacing him. So that's what I've done, said there. Shields and Hall on the wing, one of them, not both. Cunnington or Greenwood, not both. I've said uh, Cal Coleman-Jones as an option to pair with, with Goldstein. I just think that CCJ is more equipped to potentially play in the forward line than Jerry is. So if we, I think we do need to give one of those um, second Ruckman a game when they're fit, and Cal Coleman-Jones is nearly there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm saying Goldstein main Ruck, and then Cal Coleman-Jones is maybe playing... 30 to 40 percent of the ruck time and spending about half his time in the forward line and obviously some time on the bench too so that's how i've that's what i thought i think i'm be happy to hear different opinions um in the comment sections and i've i've just gone with no no kane turner but i haven't really replaced him with anyone at this point because i just don't think we have a player to replace him with a like for like i guess with this side i'm saying that zerha paul curtis and stevenson need to provide that that small forward pressure, uh, and hopefully, hopefully they would. So that is what I say is our perfect side for right now. Um, I'll post that up on um, on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot, and you can have a look at it and leave me your thoughts on it. What I've then put together here, and I spent quite a while going backwards and forwards on this. Like there is, it's so hard to come to a to a landing on it. What I've come up with, I guess, is the team for the future. So you could almost think of this as like our round 23 team, our team that, you know, without our, the, the trades and the drafts that will happen at the end of the year, like what would be our our starting side for, for next year? Because obviously we're going to pick up some players in the draft that might come straight in. Maybe we'll be active in the trade period. Where I'm assuming that we're not losing anyone. So all of those things... This is what I think our, our future team looks like. I'll read it out and I guess kind of talk to the changes as I go through it. Like the fullback line stays the same. She's or Mackay Goda. Off half back there, I've said that Bergman or Archer is coming in for Zebel. I think Zebel's been great this year. Um, I think obviously he's been a fantastic captain, a fantastic player for North Melbourne for a long time. But I do think if we're moving into the next phase, we you'd like to be in a spot where Zebel's being forced out of the side. I don't really think that's going to happen this year, but if we're thinking about what our, our best side looks like for next year, I think Bergman or Archer um, should be coming into that halfback line. Uh, and then I've got Logan McDonald staying there. Um, across the centre line, I've still got Scott, I've still got Phillips, but that Shields or Hall role I think needs to be going to, a, for example, Taron Thomas if he was to get his act together. If if not, then sure, maybe it's a, a Darcy Tucker filling that void. But yeah, I think moving beyond next year, we would hope that, that Hall and Shields aren't getting a game, aren't still in our best 23. Um, the half forward line stay the same, Taylor, Common, Curtis. The full forward line stay the same, Zerha, Larky, Stevenson. Then I've got in the ruck, Chris, Tristan Cherry. So I think that he is our best out-and-out ruckman, um, I think he starts as the ruck, and I've got Com- Common Jones on the bench, and then Dervy Zuniak and Simkin are the Rovers, Ruck Rovers beneath Cherry. Um, on the bench is Powell, Wardlaw, Cal Coleman Jones, and then this is where it just gets really tricky. I actually, you sort of almost run out of players. So for that fourth spot on the bench, I've said it could be Tucker, Spicer, or Ford. I don't really know. I guess I'm saying it's probably Tucker. But maybe if Taron Thomas um, doesn't get his act together, Tucker's moving onto the wing and it's up for a Spicer or a Ford to grab that last spot. And I've said that Charlie Lazaro is the sub. So you'll note that there's no Cunnington Greenwood there. I think they're getting moved out if we're looking ahead to next year. Um, but it's really I found it really tricky to pick those last couple of spots if we are moving on from those experienced players. So Spicer and Ford, Lazaro, it could be Flynn Perez. It could be Lockie Young. Um, it's just really hard to know. And I think that's where we kind of need to see more from those younger players this year and just so, we, so we can see what we've we've got moving forward. So I'll post both of those sides on social media. You can have a look at them. You can definitely give me your thoughts. 
Um, I'd love love to converse about it. I guess maybe later in the year we can revisit it and and have a look at what revisions we might make to it. Um, but certainly, I, I thought it was an interesting exercise to go through. It, it, I, doing that really made me realise, you know, that we are we vo- we have a, t- a talent void down the down the bottom. That's why we're down the bottom of the ladder. Um, the 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 talent really thins out. It's not so much of a squeeze of geez, all of these guys. We've got to get all of these in somehow. It's more of a squeeze of, well, how do how do I find this twenty second and twenty third player, and what what role are they playing in the side? So yeah, that's it for the pod today. I just want to encourage everyone to, again, to follow me on Twitter at North Pod Show. I'd love to hear more feedback. Um, keep sharing the show with with people that you know that would be interested in um, North Melbourne content. Um, it's definitely going to be a weekly show. Um, I just might do a couple of these um, specials now and then when I've got the time and when it makes sense. So um, hit that subscribe button and hopefully I will talk to you after a win against Gold Coast. Go North! Go North!